Okay, now we need to talk about table definitions for DB2. Now, obviously, we talked about table definitions for CSV, and you can see them here. We talk, we have a first name, we have a surname, we have an employee ID. That all matches our CSV file. But what we do not have is the table definitions for DB2, and really, that's what matters if we're going to keep db2 as an output stage and again we talked about db2 as an output stage just briefly but it is the receiving end of the arrowhead and in that case it puts whatever is in that position uh, it makes that stage output and of course the where there is no arrowhead uh, you have that stage is the input and so clearly CSV is the input and you know just obviously the uh, DB2 is our output and in that case these columns are completely m meaningless actually now how do you know that because what we're trying to do here is if we look at our employees.csv file and let's try to make this a slightly more realistic example I'm going to give the employee ID somewhat more randomly here and the idea that we're, that, we're, that we're trying to do is grab the data that comes from this or extract the data that comes from the CSV file and insert it into the appropriate table in, in counterfraud. Now, how do we do that? Well, first of all, we need to look at the right tables in counterfraud. And that table here is called the party table. The party table includes the information for parties, i.e. people, and organizations and we'll look more at its structure later. It has a party ID which is a generated, we looked at generated earlier in the DB2 video and whether or not it's an individual turned on one, turned on means one, and registered number which is essentially another, gen not a generated number but a unique identifier for that for that table. Party ID is sort of a surrogate key whereas registered number would be the unique uh, key or the primary key, the minimal super key of your CSV file. Okay, but the point of all this is that the table that we want is party because we're dealing with people employees here and these are the columns that we need to see in data stage and we're not seeing those columns we're seeing the columns from our CSV so this is this is actually useless we can't we can't we cannot use this so what we need to do is go back to our idea of table definitions and Im update them so that they will include data from our DB2 database. So if you remember from the past what we did was we clicked on table definitions and we're, we're going to right click and go to import a table definition and in this case we're going to do the connection connector import wizard because we have a DB2 connector and if you notice there's really nothing here telling us how to get to a DB2 database. So we'll click on the wizard, we'll wait for it to load and then here we go, DB2 connector, which is perfect. This is exactly what we want. Now, it's going to ask us the same sort of information we saw earlier, so we know that the instance is DB2, and it's smart enough to have looked at all of the databases in our database, and it knows we have D, uh, CFDB listed, so that's great. And we know that our username is DB24Core, and we know the password, so let's plug that in. And now we can test the connection if we want, just to be sure that it goes through and it does. You can also save this if you like so if you're making a lot of these connections you can say okay well this is my DB2 connection and if you want you can save the parameters of course here they are from when we did our, when our, when we did our uh, parameters earlier and an associated set. Remember we had looked at sets you can select one if you have one available but we're really not going to do this we're just uh, going to give it the here we go. Table definitions. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a new folder here. It's called saved, as in saved table definitions. But again, this is optional. Just want to show you that it's here. And then there we go. And let's go to next. And it says host name where the s database server resides. That's correct. CFM server and the database name CFDB on DB2. Perfect. And schema and now it's saying okay well what what is it exactly that we that we want and we can say well we want uh, the CF fact schema and if you have multiple schemas as we do here you can you can rerun this wizard and import the other schemas separately and for right now I'm just going I'm, I'm not going to be concerned with the nicknames and the aliases I'm just going to leave this as is and click on next 
and then it asks you which tables do you want and in our case I'm just going to keep this very simple we're going to do select all but notice your options you really could do related tables you could you could look at the details for a given table refresh this, this is actually pretty interesting and anyway we're going to click next and now it says the following items will be imported so this is just a confirmation screen that we we are getting the data that we wanted and I'm going to click on import and now it's going to ask us, well, okay, where do you want this to go? Well, we want this in the table definitions. And we've got our database, so that would make sense. Let's put it under database. And we'll click on OK. And we get an error message. Now, this is not an unusual error message. What it's saying here is that, if you read through it, unhandled exception has occurred in a component in your application and that component is the one that says uh, is the one C data the one responsible for this error user administrator is not authorized to perform an import operation you must have common metadata administrator role okay so to fix that error it's actually fairly straightforward we need to give our current user more roles more rights on the server so to do that go to the server via its web page the IBM Infosphere information server the administrative console I've already done that and opened up this tab we need to go to this user which is the username administrator and click on open user and in our case I do not have the common metadata administrator role and indeed that's exactly the error message we were getting so I need to give it that role now, I'm also going to give it these other two roles but you know as the error message says it really only needed this one so I'm going to scroll down click save and close and then what you're going to need to do is completely close the designer and open it back up again because unless you do that uh, well until you do that the roles that we just assigned will not be given or won't be picked up by the designer so you have to close the designer open the designer and then your roles will be picked up so no surprise here you're going to now go back to your table definitions I've already closed the designer and opened it back up you're going to go back to your table definitions go to import table definitions go to start connector import wizard exactly like we did before and I've already done this so I have all of the table definitions in inserted uh, or you know created but now I'm going to do this again so you can see that this time around it should indeed work and this time I don't want CF fact since I've already got that and this time I'm going to import the what's called CFIA but again in your case if this is the first time you you're doing this you want CF fact so go ahead and click on next I'm going to select all the tables there are very few tables in this uh, schema so that's nice I'm going to click on next and and check that the or do the confirm the import be sure everything looks good go to table definitions and I'm going to do exactly like I did before go to databases our database and click OK and then that should start the importer and yours should look like mine I'm doing CI CFIA but in your case you'd be doing CF fact of course and give it a second and now we don't get an error message and in fact the importer just goes ahead and does its work okay and I would recommend too that you import both CF fact and CFIA the way I did if you, if you don't have CFI, of course, skip that step. But the point is, let's go to de table definitions and let's just be sure everything worked. We're, gonna, we're going to expand the database, uh, sorry, the database folder. And notice that's going to take a second. And indeed, there's a good reason for it. Look at all of these table definitions that have been imported. And that is exactly what we wanted. And it's also nice because you can tell which tables are which because each, uh, each of them are prefixed with the schema that they came from. So these are obviously all of the CF fact. Well, if I were to scroll down enough, we would eventually get down to CFIA, and there we are.